Hello fellow reloaders, you're watching Fire on Fury, thanks for tuning in to the channel. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Today I'll be going over my precision reloading process. I'll be going over mainly the seating depth and kind of the process I do to, to find a load. What we have here is this Christensen Arms ridge line in 300 PRC. Um, now this is carbon fiber in case you didn't know and it is incredibly light. I think on the website I think it says 6.3 something like that um, but it is incredibly light. Um, we have a Zeus Conquest scope it's a uh, 6 to 24 zoom uh, second focal plane. This will be a, a great mountain gun. Um, and I hopefully you can see that color. This is an absolutely beautiful rifle. Um, it looks amazing. The only tools that I'm using for this, besides obviously calipers and and uh, pressing all the reloading basics, that's that's all I'm using. I'm not using any um, extra uh, gauges or measurement tools. You definitely can. You sh honestly, you probably should. It probably help you out a little bit. Um, but I'll just go over over how I do it. So first of all, we need to find the um, the maximum cartridge length, the maximum um, O driver. In this case, I'm not using any tools, so I'm using a specific bullet. I'm going to find the maximum overall length, and I'm going to reduce that by two hundredths. That's point zero two zero. Okay, and then from there, you, I'll do a do a ladder test start at the starting load for the, for your data source. I typically use Hodgkins.com. Find that most accurate powder charge, do a ladder test, um, see what that most accurate charge is, and then I will adjust the overall length uh, or the seating depth by five thousandths um, uh, up and back and uh, more if I need to, um, to, to find that the, the, the best accuracy. So for this rifle I will be using these uh, Hornady ELX bullets 30 caliber obviously in 212 grains okay there's the bullet long big old long bullet these are Hornady cases I know I got Hornady Hornady dies Hornady bullets Hornady brass should maybe I should be sponsored by Hornady <laughs> I'm, I'm not sponsored by Hornady I'm not sponsored um, by anybody for doing this video um, so but this is Hornady brass It's brand new so even though it is brand new I'll show you um, I will still size all of them before I load it um, definitely want to make sure you lube your case up okay so uh, th this is you can you can do whatever you want um, to size it some people neck size some people uh, some people full length size just enough to bump the shoulder and that's what I would recommend and that's what I do by full length sizing it just till it bumps the shoulder it's a sure fit it'll for sure fit in your gun okay the bolt will close no problem um, which is is very nice for hunting you need that for hunting right so when I start out with this process I don't I definitely don't want to go all the way down so I'll put the ram all the way up and then I'll twist it until it come, the die comes in contact with the shell holder and then I'll go um, get it off about oh, one and a half turns or something okay then I will go ahead and run the brass through the die and and I don't know if that camera is going to pick it up, but you will see where it's been sized to. So what I'll do is I'll slow, I'll slowly bring that down so I don't go too far. Now, as I said, there is a gauge to measure this exact thing. Um, I, I'm just going to eyeball it. Probably, it would probably be beneficial to get that tool. Um, Anyway, so I went down a little bit more if you can see that. So I'm going to turn it another half. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm not sure if you can see that. Now we are getting really close to the to that uh, shoulder, to where the neck starts to go into the shoulder. So I'm going to do about a quarter turn more. Okay, now I'm not sure if you can see that or not. It's down, it's pretty much sized that entire neck. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go about an eighth of a turn. I'm going to tighten this lock ring. Okay, lock ring is tight. And then I will go and I will size it once more. So, so the idea behind this is that you just barely bump the shoulder. If you were to have a gauge, you'd probably want to do it one or probably about two thousands is all. Anyway, I've simulated this, but but the most important thing is is just to stay consistent with everything. So I've I've made that adjustment to my die. I've locked the ring, and I'll go ahead back it out, and then just put it right back there to where it stops, and then I'll do all my brass so that I know that everything's the same and it, it that's the main thing you want with reloading is for accuracy is you want consistency so you do everything the same now you can full length size it um, and, and and that would be fine um, you'll you'll probably go through brass a little bit more but I don't I honestly don't think it would be a big deal I just like to barely bump size it and move the brasses as, as little as possible uh, and then start from there. Now, I, I, I already think I already mentioned I'm just using these Hornady, uh, the custom grade dies there. It's just their baseline die. Uh, as I mentioned in other reloading videos, typically I do like RCBS dies. However, um, in this caliber, from what I could find, maybe it's, maybe it has changed or I just didn't look hard enough. They did not have any of their of their base line of dies, um, and their other dies are incredibly expensive. Well, for for a set of dies, um, they're like over a hundred bucks, which is fine, and I'm sure they work excellent. Um, but for me, I I just feel as though the baseline dies of RCBS um, work good enough for my purposes. Okay, now this size is this brass is new. And it should be the trim length should be fine. Per Hornady's um, per Hornady's website, the max case length is 2.580, and the, the trim length, or and I, I interpret the trim length as, as the minimum length you'd want to trim is is 2.656. I generally try to do about five hundredths off the max, so. So this case here, this one I have not sized or anything. I'm just checking to see the consistency of the brass. This is just about the max. It's about 2.576. Uh, now this one has not been sized. This one is the one that we sized. And we're looking at about the same. Uh, it's 2.576. Seven, and then I'm going to check one more that has not been sized to see if we're yeah two point five seven five. A few more here just to make sure we're we're consistent. Yep, exact same. And that's just uh, one thousandth shorter. So I'm fine with that, so I'm not going to do any trimming. Um, all I will do is uh, get these lubed up and size them a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and run run these through. And Okay, so to find the maximum overall length for a specific bullet, now each bullet is going to be a little bit different, um, but the O-drive will be the same. That's The O-drive is essentially the diameter on the bullet, the furthest up part of the bullet 
that is in this case 4.308 inches until it starts to taper in okay that part where it starts to taper in that is considered the ogive the ogive of the rifle will be the exact same now there is a gauge that you can go and you can get and you can find the the ogive okay of the of the um of the gun in this case i do not have that tool so what i'm going to do is is find the overall maximum length now you can do that with a a once fired brass that the bullet sticks in that the bullet is has some tension but you got you can move the bullet in and out of the brass and in my case i do not have any any once fired brass i just have new brass so what i do is i go ahead and put the seating die in Now I'm not going to measure this out very much. I'm just going to get that die in a little bit um, and then get a, a case, um, no primer or anything. Go ahead, stick that up there. And then I just get it, um, get it in there pretty good. Okay, it's in there fairly good. And then I'll go ahead and go ahead and put it in my bullet puller. Now I probably should have just used a, a crap a crap 30 caliber bullet for this so I didn't bend the tip. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be careful when I um, pull it as to hopefully not mess up the tip so that I can use this. Okay, that might mess up the tip. That was a little hard. So we got the bullet pulled. Now the purpose of that is that now that it's pulled, we should be able to slide it in there just the perfect amount where we can slide it in there. So it's pretty good. I think it will be fine. It's still a little difficult to push in and I, I have kind of messed up that tip a little bit. So I will go ahead and get a new bullet and I'm going to chamfer the inside just to make sure there's no furs or anything. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's still a little tight, so I'm going to get a little bit of bullet lube, of a, sorry, case lube, put it on the bullet just to make it a little bit slick. So we'll be sure that it goes in there and it doesn't, um, it doesn't go into, force itself into lands. And go ahead and Grab the rifle, slide this bullet in, being careful not to hit it against the side of the chamber. Go ahead and push it in and close the bolt. Okay. Now when we open it, we're going to just crack that open a little bit and then I push that case back so that bullet doesn't scrape against the side and I keep pushing it back as it as I pulled out and then we'll go ahead and let that bullet come out Now I visually inspect the bullet to make sure that it does not have any marks on it. Make sure it didn't go into the lands. And this one looks fine. So I'll get my caliper and I'll take a reading. We have a 3.680. I'm going to write that down so that I can remember. Okay, I've got the bullet. I pulled the bullet out and then I put it back in. I'm just measuring to make sure that we are longer than our last measurement. All right, we're longer. We're at 3.820. So again, same thing. Very carefully put it in. 
go ahead, close the bolt on it. Open that bolt up. Pull that bolt, pull the bullet out, being careful not to touch that bolt on anything to possibly push it in and ruin our measurement. Alright, got this bolt out. We'll go ahead and measure it, see what we have, and hopefully it's very close to that other measurement. And we are at the exact same measurement, 3.680. Okay. Um, so so there I, I I'd say you're, you're good to go. That's your OJ right there. You got two in a row of the same. Um, I'm going to see if I can't pull this out real quick, just a little bit. Um, and do it one more time just to, just to be for certain that we've got what we're looking for. Okay, I pulled that bullet out. I'm going to do it one more time just to be sure, just to be 100% sure we've got the We've got that measure we want. And measure to make sure it's above what our, what our previous maximum overall lengths were, were. And we're good to go. Going to go ahead, put this bolt back in, close the bolt, open it back up. Okay. Take the bolt out carefully. And let's see what we've got. Hopefully we've got the exact same measurement as the previous two times. And we have the exact same measurement. Now what I would do is I would write this down. I I, tip, I, I like to use Google Sheets. And I know it's there, I can access it wherever I am. So this is the maximum overall length for the Christensen Arms ridge line in 300 rum. And then you need to put the bullet with the Hornady ELVX 212 grain. Now I just wrote that down, but I will put that in Excel um, and uh, sorry, in Google Sheets. All right, so we've got that. Now these are our cases that we that we previously neck sized and bumped the shoulder on. Uh, what what you're going to want to do with these? I just simply clean off that that lube real quick. And I put them here in the in the gun, and I make sure that it chambers fine. Make sure that the bolt closes fine. It's easy to close the bolt, and it is. It's uh, it's easy to close that bolt. Easy to open it. We're good. I'm going to try this on two or three of these pieces of brass, just again, just to make sure we've got everything good. For some reason, if one was a little bit more or something than the other, I, I don't want to be dealing with that when I'm out on the range and, and testing things out. So I'll go ahead and try it with two more pieces. Good. Good. Now, just out of curiosity, I would like to try that with a brand new piece of brass, just to see what kind of, just to see if there's a difference or, or any difference at all. I mean, it, it still fits fine. It might be a little bit more difficult. Um, we'll see. I'll do it. Do it back to back real quick. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the same. So, but the difference is we know that these are for sure are consistent. Um, more than likely that that new brass is consistent, but we know that for sure it's consistent. So that's what we're going off. Of. Okay. So now we can do. Um, just a little bit of math. So we know that our maximum over length 
overall length is 3.680. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start out at 3.6. We're going to take off two hundredths, which is 0 0.020 to start, okay? So that is going to be 0 0.6. 6, 0. That's our starting overall length. All right, we have everything sized. Um, I'm one last step I'm going to do is this is new brass. I'm just going to um, very lightly get my dechamper tool and just very lightly go around the inside of each case just to make sure there's nothing in, uh, nothing on that, that rim of the case that's gonna make that bolt seat weird. Okay, I've got my powder loaded up, and just as always, never take my, uh, my loads and, and try them directly in your rifle. Um, like you'll see here, I, I always load up, um, from the minimum, um, to close to the maximum, and I always double check the data in a published, I get most of my load data information from Hostins. Um, another thing that I, I think it's valuable to do is to, to have a chronograph and to, to chronograph your loads. Um, what I do is that I write down the minimum um, velocity and then I write down the maximum velocity um, according to that uh, load data. Um, it, 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 that'll just give me a good idea of where I'm supposed to be. Um, if I see something way above or even way below, then you definitely want to kind of stop and take a look and see if you can pinpoint why that is. Um, as reloading, you, you never, you always want to play it safe. Um, it, it, it can be dangerous if, if you're not paying attention or if you miss some mess something up. It's time to measure the powder charge to suit the bullet and to, um, to put the primers in the brass. I'm using the uh, large rifle primers. I'm using IMR 97977 uh, seven, seven powder and PLDX bullets. As I determined before, the overall length is the 3.660. Now I have not tested this in the rifle yet. Um, hopefully it will fit in the magazine probably test that before I load a bunch up. I'll go ahead and start measuring powder seating the primers. While I'm seating the primers, I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. This The Hornady dies have a, a sleeve in the bullet sear that comes down. It just helps align your bullet um, when, when you're seating it. Okay. So that's done. So we want 77 scale. I've already calibrated my and zeroed my scale out. So first I'm doing 72.0. Okay. I'll start priming the others while that powder is loading. I was working with uh, 300 blackout. If you haven't watched those videos, go ahead and Click on those, watch those, and the, it's just these bullets. Everything is just so much bigger. The primers and everything. It's kind of crazy how how large these calibers are. All right, so seventy two point oh is what I'm starting with. Next, I will do a seventy three. Now the reason why I'm just doing one of these is I'm simply just checking the to make sure that the pressure is good. This is not maximizing or coming close to maximizing the full potential of the case, which is, is what we want to do. We want to come close to maximizing that full potential of the case. These loads are not doing it. However, this is just part of what I do to load up the, to, to make sure that the pressure is all good. I start from the low and I um, work up, work up to, to close to the high or to the maximum. And I'm just doing one, uh, bullet of each of these low ones until I can get up to the uh, to the range that I would I would like to to shoot out of the rifle so there's a 73 
next up is the 74. Okay, now I'm up to where I want to start doing three loads of powdered charge weight. So I'm doing 75.0. And I'll do three of those. And I don't know if you have been noticing. Um, I have said this in my other reloading videos that while I'm doing the primer, I always put I'm just putting my finger underneath it to make sure that it's flush to feel like I can to feel or flush. Um, the one important thing to look out for. You don't want to have that primer. Uh, protruding the case should be at least flush with the, the back of it and as you can see I always have a have a paper here this is the same one I put in the box that has the all the loads on it so I know exactly where to, to, to put each load and where they are in case I forget for some reason now when I'm, I'm loading a series like this I typically don't like to to start doing the powder or bullets or anything and then go in and come back to it i like to um, i might do the primers and, and trim and everything and, and clean out the primer pockets and everything but as soon as i start doing the powder i like to do the powder do the bullets put them in the box put this in the box with there um, oriented correctly and then i don't have to worry about um, wasting all the time loading them and then coming back and forgetting uh, what went where. That just defeats, defeats the uh, whole purpose of it, right? If you don't know what you're shooting, it's kind of hard to know what's doing well and what's not. Now I'll go ahead and start seeding you bullets while the rest of the powder is charging. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and weigh one of these bullets. Yeah, we're right there close, okay. Make sure they put the right bullets in the right box. We'll continue on with 76 grains. Now when I'm when I'm seeding the first the bullet, I want to make sure that I don't put it in too far. Um, so I, I go ahead and measure it a few times and I don't put the ram down all the way so that I can make sure I'm good. Alright, now I'm doing 76.770. 6.7 right there. By doing 76.7, that um, takes me half of a grain off the max. So we'll see what kind of velocities we're getting and how things are looking. And then if we want, we can go ahead and... Um, go up to start getting closer to that max okay i checked to make sure that that they were fitting in the magazine and they are which is great go ahead and finish seeding these bullets And there's the finished product. Pretty awesome looking bullet. Well, there you go. Hopefully, we'll be able to show you the, the test result. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.